Hi, my name is Rob Barrett and you're watching Cooking for Dads. Today we're going to make flank steak. It's awesome. It's one of my favorite meals. We're going to make a tomato salad and we're going to make healthy french fries. Come on, let's go get our stuff. You've been to the website, you've got your list. Let's go. Get about a pound and a half of a flank steak. This is a great cut of meat. It's really flavorful and also really cheap. You're going to like it. Get an entire bulb of garlic and get two large Idaho russet potatoes. You're going to need some soy sauce, also some vegetable oil, and some olive oil. Get some Dijon mustard. This is the strange ingredient for the day. This is molasses. It should be found near the syrups. This is Br'er Rabbit. I like it because it's got a great name, but it's going to be really useful for a lot of barbecuing stuff that we're going to do. Get some ground ginger. You can also use fresh ginger if you want. Get some fresh tomatoes. All right, we need to get some dressing for our salad, for the tomatoes. Get like a blue cheese or a Caesar or something kind of creamy that kind of sticks to the tomatoes. I love this Brianna's cheddar chipotle salad dressing. It's super good. We're gonna make a grilled dessert tonight. It's really good. So get a fresh pineapple, not too green. Make sure there's a little yellow showing, not too soft. So kind of give it a little squeeze. We're also gonna need some vanilla ice cream, some graham crackers, and some chocolate syrup. All right, this is kind of controversial. This is MSG. The original recipe actually calls for this. We're going to skip it and put in sugar instead. The reason I like flank steak so much is that, first of all, it's really inexpensive. Second of all, it's got a lot of flavor and it's also really lean. So we're going to make a yummy marinade for it. Uh, let it sit for as long as possible. It'd be great if you could do it for like overnight or like a couple hours. We'll probably have this in here for like 20 minutes and that should be enough. We're going to start with about a half a cup of soy sauce, a half a cup of oil. It doesn't need to be exact, and I'm going to show you exactly how much a half a cup is so you don't have to measure it out if you don't want to. All right. So this is what a half a cup of soy sauce looks like. Take your soy sauce, pour that in. Now we're going to get about the same amount of vegetable oil and put that in as well. I'm just going to use the same cup, pour about the same amount of oil in. This is canola oil, but you can use vegetable oil. You can even use olive oil if you want to, but I would recommend canola oil. On the website, we'll have like the exact amounts, but if you're watching the video, this will give you like a visual representation of how much you need. All right, it's time for the molasses. We're going to put in four spoonfuls and stir that around. Once again, this doesn't need to be exact. One, two, Three. That's basically the right amount. Next, two spoonfuls of Dijon mustard. You can also use mustard powder if you have that. Next, two spoonfuls of ground ginger. I'm using this rather than the fresh because this will keep a lot longer. So if you're going to make it again in the future, you, you have some of this left. Doesn't have to be exact, just basically a spoonful. Instead of MSG, we're going to put in one spoonful of sugar. Next, six cloves of garlic. Remember, we don't need fancy presses. We're just going to smash them apart and cut them up. All right, we've got our six cloves. Just take it and smash it down. Peel off that skin. Smash and peel. Just crush it. Get that skin off. Take your knife and just kind of chop it up into little bits on your cutting board. You're not going to eat this, so it's not all that important. You're just using it for the flavor. This is my new knife. It is super awesome. It's from that same company that made the Ultimate Pan. Get the right tool for the right job and it really makes a big difference. All right, we're all chopped up. We're going to put that into our marinade. You're going to take a fork and stir it up. Make sure that molasses is all dissolved. We're going to cut open our flank steak. Lay that in a flat pan. And pour our marinade over the top of it. Let it sit for as long as we can. Mm. 
Mm-mm, this is gonna be awesome. Viewer mail. We're gonna do some quick viewer mail. A lot of you have written and asked what store I do the shopping in. So the store where we do the shopping is called Kowalski. It's awesome, they have the best experts, they have the best food, they have awesome prices. If you're in the Twin Cities area, don't shop anywhere else. My friend April. Hi. <laughs> Send it in. Next, we're gonna get our fries ready. This is um, not a baked fry, it's actually gonna be a fried fry, but it's gonna be really healthy and it's gonna be low fat, or as low fat as fries can be. I found baked fries just to be uh, it's kind of tough and not so good. So we're gonna cut these up into fries, we're gonna cook them in the microwave first, then we're just gonna brown them in a pan real fast with just a little bit of olive oil and salt. They are gonna be awesome. First, we're gonna wash them, make sure all the dirt's off. If it's really bad, you can use a brush. Now, if you don't want the skins on, you're gonna have to peel them, but I kinda like the skins on. So the next thing we're gonna do is cut them in half. So again, get the right knife. Then we're gonna cut them lengthwise. It's just so they have a flat bottom, and they're a lot easier to cut. Then just cut them in slices. Start with your hand as the guide, and then back your hand off a little bit each time, kinda like a claw. So your, your blade just hits right up against your hand every time. That's how those guys do it at the state fair and do all that fancy cutting. You want to cut them as evenly as possible because you want them to cook all at the same time. Once they're cut into slices, cut them into fries. Try to keep them as uniform as possible. Now we're just going to coat these with a little olive oil and salt. Cook them up. If you really want them to taste like McDonald's fries, you got to soak them in sugar water for about a half an hour. I've done it. I think it makes a little bit of a difference, but probably not enough to make it worth it. And then, you know, you've got your potatoes and sugar water too. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to rinse these off. When you cut them, they kind of ooze out the starchy liquid. We're going to rinse that off and then they won't stick together so bad. We're going to put them in our colander. Give them a quick rinse. All right, we've rinsed off our fries. We're going to put them in a bowl that you can cook in the microwave. We're going to put this in for about three minutes or three and a half minutes, just until it starts to feel soft. Right now, the edges are really hard. Just cook them until they're basically done. All right, the actual cooking time for these is about five minutes or just over five minutes. It depends on your microwave and exactly how many potatoes you have, but you want them just to kind of just start to soften up and then they're ready to go. We're gonna put them in this bowl, cover them with a little bit of olive oil and kosher salt, and then we're gonna fry them in a pan. Just give a splash of olive oil. Some kosher salt or salt, stir those up. Try to separate them as much as possible. We're going to cook our steak next because we want the kind of the fries to come out and be hot and ready to go to the table. And the steak needs to sit for about 10 minutes after it's cooked anyways, so this will work perfectly. Let's go get our steak on the grill. Okay, we haven't done any grilling on this show yet because there's a lot of grilling shows out there and I'm sure a lot of you know as much or more about grilling than I do. But this is a, just such a great meal that I thought it was worth going out and, and doing. I grill all winter long here in Minnesota. Like right now, it's like minus five degrees Fahrenheit. And so uh, this may go a little bit quicker if you're in a warmer climate. If you don't have a grill, you can roast this in your oven for about 20 minutes at 400 degrees. Again, it depends on how thick your steak is and how hot your oven gets. But we're gonna put this on our grill. Basically, get it warmed up. These are the basics and you know them. Make it so you're, you can't keep your hand over for more than a second. It's about 400 degrees. We've got this all nice and marinated up. Again, if, let it marinate as long as possible. Do it the night before if you can. And then we're gonna drop this on. That is a good sound. We are gonna do four and a half minutes to five minutes on each side. Depends on how thick your steak is a little bit. And we're gonna end up slicing this steak, so don't be afraid to cut into it to check it. Let's go set our timer for four and a half minutes. Okay. 
For our salad, we're just going to take tomatoes, slice them, and then cover them with the dressing. It's really easy and it's, it's super good. It really goes well with steak especially. So we're going to wash them first. Peel off those green things. I got both yellow and red because I think the colors are going to be kind of cool, especially with this Brianna's dressing. I'm just going to cut out this white part and slice them up. All right, to put these together, take your tomato and just kind of spread it out over the plate. Now in this case, we're going to take half of the red and half of the yellow. Just take your dressing and pour a, a little stream right over the middle. There you go. All right, five minutes up, flip it over. Four and a half to five minutes this side. All right, our time's up. We're gonna cut into this just to make sure. You want it pretty pink on the inside, so this is just right. We're gonna pull her off, let her sit for 10 minutes. All right, our steak is done. We're gonna cover it with foil. Let it sit for 10 minutes. This actually completes the cooking. It brings the juices back in and finishes it all up. Now we're going to go do our fries. Everything will be hot and ready to go. Okay, we've got our fries. They're covered in olive oil. At this point, if you want to bake them on a tray with some parchment paper, you can do that. We're not going to add any more oil, so it doesn't make a big difference, but I think the frying gives it a better texture. It just uh, tastes more like fries than, than baked. You'll notice we actually have some half-decent pans finally. Thanks to the guys at Anilon, they are awesome. Um, I love these pans because they have these glass lids. They also clean themselves essentially um, and they're nice and big. They have these rubber handles. There's nothing not to like. We're going to get this pan as hot as we possibly can. That way these will cook um, or brown up in the shortest time possible. We don't really need these to cook too much because they've cooked mainly in the microwave. Um, basically we're just trying to add some texture. Okay, we're going to check our pan. We're going to take a fry and touch it and see if it sizzles. This is ready to go. You might need to work in smaller batches. You want to have one layer of fries so that it touches the, the pan. You don't want to have them stacked up on top of each other, but they should cook pretty fast. Just dump them in. Again, we're not adding any, of the, any oil to the frying. This is just the oil that we added before. Try to get them as flat as possible on the pan. Doesn't have to be perfect. Any that are sticking together, cut them apart. Do as many as you can. We're just going to let that brown, probably about a minute, and we're going to flip them over, shake them around as much, get as many sides browned as possible. All right, these are starting to brown up, so we're just going to flip them over. Again, doesn't need to be exact. We're going to cook them on a variety of sides. You can see them getting nice and brown on the side that hits the pan. Once you got a lot of them flipped over, try to smooth them out so there's one layer. You can always deep fry them if you want. If you just want to add a bunch of oil and, and you know make sure they're completely coated. But this is olive oil and it just has a little bit on there so it gives you that flavor and that taste without all the saturated fat and stuff. Alright, our fries are pretty well done. Once again, you can bake them if you want. I just find this mimics the deep frying experience better. Just dump them out on a paper towel. Haven't already? Give them a shot of kosher salt, or even if you have. All right, we're going to slice up our flank steak. It's been sitting, it's still nice and hot. Take it to a cutting board. We're going to cut across the grain, kind of on an angle, and down like this. This is kind of done medium here. If you want it cooked more, you can always put it back on. You can never cook it less. I'm going to put that back on our plate to serve that up. And we are ready to go. Mm -hmm. 
All right, marinated flank steak with tomato salad and french fries. Does it get any better than this? You'll love it. Mm-mm. Mm. mm. Alright, this is a great meal and you should serve it this way and have everyone sit down. Once that's done, there's a great grilling dessert I want to show you as well. So we'll go ahead and eat and then afterwards we'll make the dessert real quick. Alright, this is a super easy grilled dessert. You're going to love it. Take your pineapple, cut it into chunks. Put it on the grill just until it turns brown. Take some vanilla ice cream, put that in a bowl. While your pineapple is still warm, cut it into smaller chunks and put that over the ice cream. Add some chocolate syrup. Crumple up some graham crackers and put that over the top. You are ready for a treat. That's it. My name is Rob Barrett. You're watching Cooking for Dads. Cook well. It's worth it. Mm-hmm.